What's up guys, Juice Messi here. Welcome to a brand new video. Welcome to a daily dose of transfer gossip. Today is going to be Wednesday, the 17th of August. And there are just over two weeks remaining of the transfer window itself. So the teams haven't really got too long now to get their business done. So expect a lot of confirmed transfers in these videos in the build up to deadline day, guys. Also yesterday was a FIFA 17 ultimate team reveal. How good was that? I'm genuinely so, so hyped for that. It looks so good, all in game as well. And it's like two new game modes, new cards and stuff. If you haven't seen it, I'll do a video tonight guys covering all that information but before we get any further back onto this video as always if you smash 1000 fire likes that'd be absolutely awesome if you're new to my channel click that subscribe button for daily fifa content including fifa 17 content very very soon and also in the comments below let me your thoughts on today's rumors and let me know what rumors i should do in the next episode and finally if you missed yesterday's videos let me down below in that description box guys 8 ms transfers and after 9 p.m is the second video of the day and we've got 17 confirmed transfers to get through today so start things off the former spurs man ben Asuakoto. He's gone to FC Mets from St Etienne on a free transfer, so has remained in that league. He's one of the few players that has admitted he plays football for the money. Next up, we've gone to Leren Duarte going to a team called Heracles. I'm pretty sure I said that right, yeah, from Ajax on a free transfer. Xavi Torres has gone to Sporting Gijon from Real Betis on a free transfer. There's quite a lot of free transfers featuring in this episode because uh, quite a lot actually went through yesterday. Next, I've got Liam Bridcut going to Leeds United from Sunderland. It's an undisclosed fee and he was actually at Leeds United before. I think he was on loan there for half the season as well from Sunderland. So he, he hasn't been featuring for Sunderland for a long, long time. So the move was kind of obvious. Next, I've gone to Dijan Lazarevic. Going to team non-FIFA right now, but they will be on FIFA 17. And that team is going to be, I think it's Karabukspor. That's in Turkey from Kievo on a loan deal. Then we go to Christian Teo from Barcelona, going to uh, Fiorentina's time on loan deal for £425,000. And this one actually includes an option to buy for Fiorentina, but Barca can block it if they want to keep him. Then we go on to uh, Luca Rossettini going to Torino. That is from Bologna for £1.7 million. We've got to David Jones going to Sheffield Wednesday from Berlin undisclosed fee, but I'm assuming it's possibly a free transfer. Uh, then Bruno Fernandes going to Sampdoria. That is from Udinese on a season-long loan for £850,000. It is actually quite a decent non-rare card to be fair, uh, but I've never actually seen him in real life. Then we go on to uh, Zivkovic, a youngster from Ajax. Actually, yeah, he's still, yeah, still a youngster. Going to FC Utrecht in the Eredivisie on loan deal. I think last season was out on loan at another uh, Eredivisie club. Then we go on to uh, Sven Shiplock going to SV Darmstadt. That's from Hamburg on a loan deal for the whole season. I'm fully aware a few guys may be thinking, Ross, why are you covering players like this? But it's a simple fact I've got a very wide like, audience in these videos. I think the support of teams all around the world. And that's why I want to give you as much detail as possible about these. Because in general, some of you may support the club I'm actually talking about. Or potentially, they could be a decent player on FIFA 17. Next up, though, we've gone to contract extension for Vedran Choluca. He was linked heavily yesterday to a move to Fiorentina, but he's actually signed a new deal to remain at Lokomotiv Moscow for another four years until 2020. Next up, we've gone to Luke Garbett going to Wigan from Everton. And that one again is a loan deal. Now we've gone to Alessandro Matri, a player that's kind of a veteran nowadays. He has gone to Sassuolo from Milan on an undisclosed fee, but I'm assuming again, not too much. Mario Suarez has completed his move to Valencia from Watford on a loan deal, but it does have an option to buy. But I'm not too sure how much that option actually is. Then we go on to Jonathan Caleri going to West Ham. This actually announced yesterday. I covered it a few days ago, but it's a loan deal again for this season. And that is from Maldonado. Potentially, though, this card could be quite nice for FIFA 17 if he has a slight upgrade. Now, finally, we've gone to Bruno Perez completing a switch to Roma from Torino on loan deal for 1 million euros, but he has an obligation to buy depending on performance-based targets. Now, that fee at the end of it could be 12.5 million euros. And when he was linked to like some Manchester City, Arsenal and stuff, apparently they had to pay like 20 odd million pounds for him, but Roma have gone for 12.5 million euros, which I think works out just over 10 million pounds. Obviously, add the 1 million euro loan fee as well on top of that, but still, it's, it's such a cheap fee for a player that does have a lot of quality about him. Now we go on to the potential deals and first up, Danny Drinkwater. According to Sky Sports Gossip column, Danny Drinkwater has rejected a new £80,000 a week contract with Leicester City. The Premier League champions will make an improved offer of £100,000 a week to Danny Drinkwater. So it's a massive contract potentially for him, but I imagine he's pretty based off what uh, I think it's Kasper Schmeichel, also Jamie Vardy are currently on. But Leicester really need to make sure they keep all their players and kind of help them win the title last season. Danny Drinkwater definitely was one of those. Now we go on to the next player, uh, Luzial, linked to Wolves. According to Ojogo in Portugal, Wolves are closing in on the signing of Benfica defender Luzial. The Championship Club have offered the 35 on a deal worth just under £100,000 per week. So bear in mind, we were just talking about how Danny Drinkwater was offered £80,000 per week, but Wolves are offering this guy 
just more than that. I know he's a very recognizable name. He's a player that has played a lot of games for Brazil as well, but the guy is 35 years old. And in general, I don't think £100,000 per week is worth it whatsoever, but we'll have to wait and see as Wolves do have the money. Now we go on to uh, Michu, a player that it's been a while since we've seen his name, linked to Real Oviedo. Remember how good he was in his debut season for Swansea, then since then, he's kind of been all over the place. I think that he went to Napoli, and I think currently right now, he's playing in the fourth tier or something of Spanish football. Actually, reading the article, it does say something about it. It says that former Swansea forward Michu, currently playing with Spanish fourth tier side, UP Langrio, uh, is on the verge of joining Real Oviedo in the second tier. And to be fair, he's definitely playing for love of football because I, I can't imagine he's getting too much money in that fourth tier. And uh, I think again, he's playing with his brother or his brother is the manager. Now let's next player, DeAndre Yedlin. According to chroniclelive.co.uk, Hull and Derby have made 3.5 million pound offers to Tottenham for defender DeAndre Yedlin. Sunderland, who spent last season on loan at, have also been linked. I think if Sunderland do come back in for him, he'd probably join them over the likes of Hull and Derby, because uh, no disrespect to Derby, they are a championship club at this point in time, and Sunderland, he has been there before. Now we go on to Lloyd Gremmie, linked to Villarreal. According to Le Ten Sport, Villarreal are the latest club to show an interest in Chelsea striker Lloyd Gremmie, with Everton and Crystal Palace also keen on the former QPR man. So he could be the second striker that played for Chelsea at some point last season to go to Villarreal after Alexandre Pato went there on a permanent basis. So I think Remy and Pato, that'd be quite a cool one for foot. He'd also be a really nice and cheap link to like the Benzema, Antoine Griezmann and players like that. So Lloyd Gremmie would not be a bad player in the Liga BBVA. Now we go on to Daily Blind, linked to Inter Milan. Inter Milan would like to bring Manchester United defender Daily Blind to Italy, according to sports media set. The Dutch legend Frank de Boer, who is now the official manager of Inter Milan, is hoping to capitalise on the uncertainty surrounding Daily Blind's future by bringing him to the San Siro this summer. However, the Netherlands international Daily Blind looks set to remain at Old Trafford after United boss Jose Mourinho confirmed his part of his plans. Sports media set also include the next guy who is currently based for a club in Manchester, but their rival is Manchester City, Mangala. They claim that Inter had their sights set on him as well, but Mangala has been linked to likes of Valencia and also their rivals, Milan, the other day. That's obviously AC Milan, but Man City, they'll probably get rid of Mangala this summer because he hasn't really lived up to expectations. They paid a lot of money for him and bringing John Stones, it puts him down that pecking order. Pep actually played Kolarov at centre-back the other day ahead of Mangala, so it kind of shows the situation he's currently in, not really needed at the Etihad anymore. Now we've gone to Carl Spacca, linked to West Ham, but it looks like it's completely off now. And that is because West Ham cannot find a buyer for out of favour forward Diafra Sacco, who was linked to West Brom, but in fact failed a medical or wasn't going to be fit for the Premier League opener. And now West Ham don't have the money to complete a move for the AC Milan forward Carlos Baca. So uh, he's been linked to them so, so much as of late. They apparently agreed a deal of £30 million, but Diafra Sacco, he didn't go, meaning they haven't really got, they got the money, but it means they want to use the Sacco money or half it to get this guy. If they somehow do get rid of Sacco, I'm assuming Baca will be linked a lot again. Now we move on to uh, Jose Fonte linked to Arsenal. According to ESPN, Arsenal have joined Manchester United in the race to sign £10 million rate to Southampton defender and captain Jose Fonte. Arsenal will probably get Mustafi, but they still probably need one more defender with uh, quite a few injuries scattered about here and there. And imagine Arsenal fans, they wouldn't probably say no to Fonte because he has got a lot of Premier League experience. But if you believe the Daily Telegraph, Southampton have offered captain Jose Fonte a new contract. This is because they want to ward off interest from Manchester United and Arsenal. I think if it's Fonte, if he's actually, if he legit has the offers from them to clubs, it's probably quite hard for him to say no to them. And according to a few other newspapers, they're saying that United could offer this man Marcus Rojo to Southampton in return. And this would be part of an offer for centre-back Jose Fonte. So Fonte is a wanted man right now, and Rojo wouldn't be the worst replacement. I mean, he hasn't really settled in too well in England, but uh, Mourinho obviously wants Jose Fonte. So if he wants him, I'm assuming they'll probably end up getting him. Now we go on to Matteo Damian of United linked to Napoli and Roma. Both Napoli and Roma are interested in signing Manchester United right back Matteo Damian, according to Sky Sources. The Italian international, who is 26 years old, is currently contracted to the Red Devils until the summer of 2019. And he did only join them one year ago. Now we move on to Gary Medell, linked to Liverpool. Liverpool are preparing a 15 million euro bid to sign Interman holding midfielder Gary Medell, according to Corriere della Sport. Actually, the source is Corriere della Sera, sorry. Um, so Medell, it does say holding midfielder like a CDN. That's where he plays at club level, but for Chile, he plays as a centre back. Reds boss Jurgen Klopp wants to strengthen his midfield options before the transfer window closes, with the experienced Chilean international his number one target. However, the Italian sports daily also claimed that the Serie A club will not allow Medell to join the Merseysiders if Inter midfielder Marcelo Brozovic leaves the San Siro this summer. And he has been linked a lot to Arsenal over the last, let's say, six months or so, or even up to a year. 
Now we move on to a pal today, a Spanish goalkeeper linked to Tottenham. It is a short one though from the Daily Mail. And they're claiming that Tottenham have made further inquiries by Espanol goalkeeper Paulo Lopez after goalkeeper Hugo Lloris was ruled out for up to four weeks with a hamstring injury. And to be fair, he has been linked a lot to Spurs over the last, let's say, month or so. Now we've gone to Fabregas, apparently now wants to stay at Chelsea. Cesc Fabregas is fully focused on playing for Chelsea and working under new head coach Antonio Conte, according to Sky Sources. The midfielder was left on the substitute's bench for the entirety of the West Ham game on Monday night. The press over the last couple of days have been linking Fabregas with a move to Juventus, Barcelona and also Real Madrid. However, Sky Sports understand the 29-year-old is keen to prove his worth under Antonio Conte. So Fabregas, the rumours came out that apparently is annoyed about not playing the other day, but I think one game it's not going to change his opinion. And our big one for West Brom are Jalbin. According to Sky Sources and also ESPN, West Brom are interested in sport and Lisbon striker Islam Slimani. Both clubs are not far apart in the valuations of the 28-year-old Algeria international. West Brom are evaluating whether to go ahead with the move, given the fact that Slimani would miss a month of the new year to take part in the African Cup of Nations with Algeria. ESPN said that West Brom bid 25 million euros for the Algerian striker, but Sporting are holding out for 30. So keep an eye out for this one, because I think if he does join, Berahino could still be sold. Now we go on to Christian Benteke, linked to Crystal Palace. So Liverpool have turned down another offer from Crystal Palace for out of favour striker Christian Benteke, again according to Sky Sources. And by Sky Sources they essentially mean every single paper in the UK. But apparently the offer is £23 million up front with a further £7 million of additional fees. Apparently £2.5 million worth of them clauses was if Crystal Palace got top four. And some other additional fees with 20 goals this season appearing 70% of games again, Champions League football. But a deal is still expected to go ahead eventually, but the £30 million package will have to be reframed by Palace. So basically sort out all those additional fees. Now that we go on to Gabigol linked to Manchester United. United have pulled ahead of Leicester, Chelsea and Juventus in the race to sign Santos striker Gabriel Barbosa or Gabigol and will pay a total of £30 million. He definitely currently has a lot of ability but on top of that has a lot more potential so Gabigol could be a Premier League player next season. And he also played for Brazil at the Olympic Games. Now we got on to uh, Koulibaly linked to Chelsea. Chelsea haven't given up on signing Koulibaly from Napoli, according to Calcio Mercato. Antonio Conte is understood to have upped his bid for their centre-back to 50 million euros or 43.4 million pounds. Napoli want to keep hold of Koulibaly and are reportedly willing to offer him a new contract. And that is regardless of whether the player intends to actually sign one. But like I said at the beginning, there's still over two weeks remaining in the window, so watch this space for Koulibaly. Now finally, we've gone to James Rodriguez again, this time linked to Juventus. According to Football Mercado, Juve are willing to pay 85 million euros for a rounded start and midfielder James Rodriguez. That's after he fell down the pecking order at the Santiago Bernabeu. So again, I say every time Zidane has said multiple times himself that James will stay. But despite that, he has been linked to Arsenal and Chelsea and now Juve over the last three days. Juventus did get mad money for Paul Pogba. Uh, they did spend a lot on Higuain as well, so I'm not sure whether they'd buy him or not. But is there one massive transfer remaining in this window? We'll have to wait and see. Right, guys, there's all today's potential transfers as well as confirmed stuff at the very beginning. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. 1,000 fire likes would be absolutely awesome. If you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button for the day. If you for content, the comments below, and your thoughts on today's rumors, the rumors I stream in the next episode. And if you missed yesterday's videos, link down below in that description box, guys. 8 a.m. transfers, and after 9 p.m. is the second video of the day. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.